Oh hey, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Listen closely. I don't have a lot of time. Whatever you do, don't sell Bitcoin before it reaches... Until what? Until what? No, come back. At least tell me when I'm going to reach 100k subs. Hey guys, I'm Kevin from BFB and unfortunately I was not able to get info about Bitcoin's price from my future self. But over the years I have built my own mental model for gauging when Bitcoin may be near a peak. And this comes from a lot of observation, research, and analysis. You're probably wondering, why is this important though? Aren't we just holding forever and ever? For a portion of our Bitcoin, absolutely. But the last thing we want to do is to hold all the way up and all the way back down. Many of us did that last time around, and that's why I've tweaked my strategy a bit to make sure that doesn't happen again. So in this video, I want to share with you the handful of stats and data that I keep my eye on periodically to kind of gauge when Bitcoin's top is near. This includes things like investor sentiment, on-chain analysis, and so much more. I also want to share with you my personal recommendation of how you should act upon this knowledge because I'm by no means advocating to try to time the peak exactly and then sell all your Bitcoin there. Don't worry guys, you can put down the pitchforks for a second. At the end of this video, I'm also going to touch on something called the super cycle and how if that happens, everything changes. Want to learn more? Well, just smash that like button and let's get it. All right, so there's three main categories of info and data that I'm looking for. Investor sentiment, on-chain analytics, and market cycle models. Let's get a little bit deeper into each of these. By investor sentiment and behavior, what I mean is your everyday investors, like you and I, how are the masses feeling about Bitcoin and what actions are they taking? Individually, we're guppies, right? And we don't really matter that much, but collectively, we're a powerful force to be reckoned with. Just look at how Wall Street bets took down huge hedge funds with their collective might. When it comes to investor sentiment, this classic picture is worth a thousand words. Market cycles happen everywhere. It doesn't matter what asset we're talking about, which time period, it will play out in some way, shape, or form. But the million dollar question is, how do we tell accurately which part of the cycle we're in? Short answer is, we can't really know, and not even billion dollar hedge fund investors can tell for sure. But what we can do is to dig into certain types of data and look for anecdotal clues as well to kind of get a feeling for this. One great example is Google search trends. You can take a look at how often people are searching about Bitcoin relative to other time periods in the past. When we look at 2017, for example, there was a huge spike in Google search traffic for Bitcoin, and that trends chart just really rocketed and it really matched Bitcoin's price chart closely at that time. If you look at early 2021 right now, that chart is also really rocketing. But if you zoom out a bit, you'll see that it is still less than the peak in 2017. So what does that tell us, right? That makes me think that we're probably not at the same levels of thrill or euphoria quite yet. Besides Google, you can also look into other places you already hang out in, like Facebook groups, Twitter, Slack, Discord, Telegram groups, subreddits, on and on, right? They're all places where other crypto investors might hang out, and you can look for how much buzz, how much engagement and activity. When Bitcoin is near the top, activity levels in these places will really blow your previous expectations out of the water. One really fun example is YouTube. Back in 2017, it seemed like new crypto channels were popping up left and right on a daily basis. But as we all know, when the bear market came, they slowly started to fade and some of them disappeared altogether. We're still here, by the way, don't you worry. Shout out to all those who stayed. But my point is, these are the types of things that you can look for to get a sense for when the market is about to turn. Now this hard data is nice, but you can also look in your own personal lives for anecdotal evidence. When we're getting close to a peak, you see things like old acquaintances from high school hitting you up to ask about crypto. Things like taxi drivers trading on their lunch breaks. Your yoga instructors shilling you Litecoin. True story, by the way. My point is all of these things are clues that we can gather to kind of get a sense for when we might be close to a Bitcoin peak. A funny story from my own life. One of my friends is a loan officer at a local bank, and he said that during the last bull run, he had new customers walking in every day asking for a loan. And he was like, okay, what do you want it for? Ready to write it down, 
on the form. They said, I want to buy Bitcoin with it. Well, we all know how it turned out. Those who got loans for that got wrecked. But my point is, that is a great example of how retail behavior surfaces during times of peak activity. Now, those examples might be a little bit too anecdotal for you, but have no fear. Let's dive into some hard data from the wonderful world of on-chain analytics. Because remember, Bitcoin's blockchain is beautiful. It's an open ledger, so anyone can look through transactions happening now and all in the past as well. And so some smart data people realize that they can mine that treasure trove for specific valuable metrics, such as how long people are holding their Bitcoin on average. What is the average dollar value that's being transacted in every Bitcoin transaction? What are whales doing? Are they accumulating or selling? You can kind of get a sense for how these are important and can feed our own analysis of when we may be near a peak. There are a few specific on-chain metrics that I like to revisit on a recurring basis. Our HODL ratio, MVRV score, and reserve risk. I'm not going to bore you with all the details about each one, but I will share with you in a nutshell what you need to know about them. Our HODL essentially compares the value of Bitcoin that one week holders have versus the value of Bitcoin that one year holders have. So it kind of compares and contrasts recent investors versus long-term ones. And when the ratio gets too high, that means it's mostly new ones holding most of the value. And that's when we might be really close to a peak. MVRV score compares our current market cap for Bitcoin to the realized cap, which takes into consideration the price of Bitcoin at which it last moved. So when the market value gets to be much greater than the realized value, that's also when we may be near a top. And Reserve Risk looks at the confidence of long-term Bitcoin holders in relation to Bitcoin's price. And confidence is gauged by looking on the blockchain at how willing people are to hodl. The idea is that when this confidence score is low and the price is high, that's when top is near. There are so many other interesting and potentially valuable metrics in this on-chain world, but I hope that what I share can kind of get you a sense for why they might be useful for predicting Bitcoin's top. You definitely should research these for yourself though. Go check out woobull.com or look into bitcoin.com to see all these great charts and more. When I look at these, I definitely like to consider them on a holistic basis altogether. And just know that they may not always line up perfectly, right? Some may be screaming, the top is in, the top is in. Others may be like, no, this is just normal, right? So my point is don't follow any one of them religiously and be sure to take all of it with a grain of salt. The final area where we should look for clues is what I like to call market cycle models for Bitcoin's price. This includes things like the pi cycle indicator, Puel multiple, and stock to flow ratio. Pi cycle looks at two specific moving averages and looks for when they cross to signify a potential peak. Moving averages gives us a great idea of how price is trending over various time frames. Well multiple gives us a sense of miners and their inclination to sell. Miners represent the supply side of the Bitcoin world, so it's really important to understand their pressures and their point of view too. Lastly, stock to flow models Bitcoin's price based on its scarcity. Remember, every four years, Bitcoin's issuance is cut in half per a halving, so that affects the scarcity. And this model is used to predict other stuff like gold, silver, and platinum, other store of value type commodities. But just know that the statistical link between price and scarcity has not been proven for Bitcoin. Though to me, it makes intuitive sense, right? Which is why I like to keep my eye on it regardless. All of these models may fit past data beautifully, but that doesn't mean they're great for predicting the future. They've not been scientifically proven, so let's not rely on them for any guarantees per se. We can consider them, just know that they only work until they don't. That's why if you go too crazy trading based on any of these models, that's a surefire way to get wrecked. Now here's the whopper. Have you heard of something buzzing around the interwebs called Bitcoin Supercycle? Essentially, this theory is that because institutional adoption is here and because of all the infrastructure advancements in the crypto space, there's no longer going to be traditional four year macro cycles for Bitcoin. And instead, it's headed to one million dollar once and for all with only minor corrections on its way there. Now, I'm not going to dive into all the intricacies of that theory in this video, but I do plan on making another one about this topic. So if that sounds interesting to you at all, smash that like button so I know to make it for you ASAP. Just know that if the super cycle model is right, then all my previous frameworks will be irrelevant. 
So that's a possibility we need to be on the lookout for. Okay, so now that you're better equipped to predict and estimate peaks, what should you do about it? Well, you should definitely come up with a plan and stick to it rather than going from your gut feeling about it because that's a surefire way to invest and trade in a suboptimal manner. I recommend identifying for this cycle what percentage of your Bitcoin holdings you want to sell and take profits on. You should set laddering sell orders and pick some prices you think are likely to hit and some that are unlikely to hit. For example, you can say 5% of my Bitcoin in each of these levels, 60K, 80K, 100K, 150, 200, and 250K. I just tossed out those random numbers, so don't hold me to them. My personal view is that you should never sell 100% of your Bitcoin, right? You should have a forever bag that you hodl on and on because many people have sold 100% of the balances and regret it every day. Aside from that though, you should not be ashamed to take some profit. Treat yourself, invest in some real estate, help out a family member, or just diversify your portfolio. I know most of y'all watching this are probably overweight in crypto in our overall portfolio, much like I am. Well guys, let me know if this was helpful at all and share with us your plan of attack of how you're gonna approach this Bitcoin cycle down in the comments below so we can all share notes and discuss. While you're there, please smash that like button because that helped me out so much. And why not check out some exclusive deals I have down for you below. Like you can get up to 250 bucks in BTC from BlockFi by signing up using my exclusive link. I'm Kevin from BFB. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you on the next one.